Hello and welcome back to another Welcome Back to a video. Today we're going to be DCC fitting the Hornby Railroad Flying Scotsman. So, as you may know, I do model modern era. Now, I've had this model lying around for about seven years now, and I haven't been able to run it since my loft layout's DCC and my mini exhibition layout, it doesn't really fit it, and I want to run more prototypical stock on that. So, I know this isn't really my sort of thing, as I do like to run more prototypical, and seeing as this is a model which has less detail than I'd normally want and it's A1 LNER Flying Scotsman and Flying Scotsman at the moment is preserved as a BR A3 so it doesn't really fit however I had it lying around so I thought why don't I fit it with DCC as I do have a couple of spare chips from when I upgraded my HST to TTS Sound so I thought today I'd show you how to do it as it isn't just a simple job of taking it out and plugging the new DCC chip in because it doesn't have the plug to put it in, you have to solder it. So I thought I'd do a tutorial today to show you how. First I'll go through what you need to perform the conversion to DCC. First we obviously need a decoder. So you have to be prepared to cut the plug off the end obviously if you want to perform the conversion. Also I will be using a standard Hornby 8 pin decoder. Now if you're using a different sort of decoder, I would check to make sure that this will work for your decoder because I'm unsure for anything other than the Hornby 8-pin decoder. Obviously you need some form of device to cut the wires, a screwdriver for undoing the body of the loco, a soldering iron which mine there doesn't even fit in the photo. So I recently purchased this soldering iron and I've been really happy with it so I made a review on it in the future. Obviously some solder to use with the soldering iron. The next few things are things you don't necessarily need, however they might make the job a bit easier. So this is a wire stripper and cutter, which I recently purchased too, I may talk about this in the future as well. Some flux to help with your soldering. Finally some heat shrink if you want to protect your joints a bit more. So now let's get started in the conversion. First obviously you need to take away the tender. Now to remove the body you need to first get your screwdriver. and turn the front bogey to a 90 degree angle and under it, at the front of the loco, you'll see a screw which you'll have to undo to remove the body. Obviously be very careful when doing this not to damage any parts of the loco. Also keep the screw in a safe place as we'll need it later when we put the body back on after the conversion. Now remove the body from the chassis by sliding the chassis forward and the body back and it should just lift apart. I have already removed the body once to have a quick look so it might be quite stiff the first time. So this is what you'll see when you first take the body off the loco. I have pulled the wires out a bit more so you can get a better look. So as you can see there's the two arrows pointing at the red pickups. So this is one polarity and one of those goes to the tender pickups and one goes to the wheel pickups on the loco. Now these are joined at this heat shrink here, which the black wire from the heat shrink runs to one of the capacitor legs. As with before, these are the two black wires which are the opposite polarity pickups, one going to the tender and one going to the loco's wheel pickups. These are also joined at a heat shrink which is here. Then a black wire from that heat shrink runs to the opposite capacitor leg and is heat shrinked on there. Then at the bottom of each capacitor leg, there is a wire which joins onto the motor. These two wires are joined on the top and the bottom of the motor. Here is a simplified diagram of the pickups going to the capacitor, then going down to the motor. So at the moment, the pickups go straight through the capacitor, through to the motor to power the train via DC. So what we need to do is get the decoder here and run the contacts through the correct wire in the decoder, then through the decoder back into the motor. So basically it goes via the decoder, which will be telling the train when to actually go through DCC. So what we first need to do is cut the plug off the end of the decoder. We need to leave quite a lot of wire just so we have room to work with. So as you can see, I've cut the plug off the end of the decoder. I've left a lot of wire to work with also. Now we have to single out the black, the red, the grey, and the beigey pinky colour wire so we can work with them. 
I've singled out the black, the red, the grey and the beigey pinky colour wire and I've twisted the other wires together just so they don't interfere with anything else. So now what we need to do is get the red and black wires from the decoder and solder them to the relative pickups. The red wire going to the red pickups and the black wire going to the black pickups. So as you can see I have cut the wire going between the pickups and the capacitor. I cut the wire there and not higher so I didn't have to wire up the two pickups and the decoder wire together. Instead just soldering the wire which had already been soldered and heat shrinked on to the decoder wire. As you can see this is the same on both polarity wires. So I've added flux to all the wires I'm joining. So first we're going to be joining the two red, well the red pickups and the red wire from the decoder together. So as you can see I'm soldering it together and it seems to be a pretty strong joint. Don't forget to add the heat shrink tubing if you're adding that onto the wire otherwise you won't be able to do it as you won't be able to pass it through the decoder. So make sure you put that on before doing the solder joint. So as you can see I've done both of those joints now. I couldn't really get a good view of me soldering the black wire so here it is now. I'm not going to be doing the heat shrink just yet in case something doesn't work. So we'll do that again at the end and go back and shrink it down. Now for the next joints we need to solder the decoder pinky beige wire and the decoder grey wire to the wires we just cut. Now I'm soldering the pinky beige wire to the wire we cut which leads on to the top of the motor and I'm soldering the grey wire to the wire we cut which leads on to the bottom of the motor if you follow the wire trail. Now I'm unsure if it will work the other way so I recommend you do it this way if you want to be on the safe side. So there we go, I've done the two solder joints now. I couldn't really get a good angle of me doing it, so I just left that part of the video out. However, I did just explain what I was soldering and where. So there you go, hopefully it should work now. Let's go give it a try. So here it is on my loft DCC layout. So now I think it's time to give it a go. This bit of track it's on, I've unjoined from the rest of the layout, so it's completely isolated and it should be good for testing. So there we go, it's moving. So it's set to address number one, which I kind of expected it wasn't gonna be number three as I did use it with my HST before, which was set to number one. I think it needs its wheels cleaned a bit as it's a bit jolty. However, it's looking pretty good. Just gotta be careful not to drag that decoder along the baseboard. So I'm just gonna go and heat shrink those heat shrink tubes down now and then stick the body back on. And I think it's time for a bit of a running session. So there she is. It was a bit of a squeeze getting the decoder in. However, I was able to in the end. So let's send her around for a quick loop. Then we'll do a proper running session with another loco and some coaches on her. So there we go, she runs pretty well. So I think it's time for a mini running session. This isn't something I'd usually do as I'm more a modern sort of guy that tries to go a bit more prototypical. However, let's just have a bit of fun, so let's go. So I hope you enjoyed that short running session and I hope this video helped too if you're trying to do anything similar. Feel free to ask any questions down in the comments below if you're still confused. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. See ya.